I'm here with uh, Mark Rowe, the International Director of Andrew Walmack Ministries, and, and David Sanfuma. Uh, and today I'm excited because of I'm getting to hear these testimonies right here, standing in Kampala, Uganda. And it's, it's, it's incredible to see the impact that Glory Bank is really having in this city. And remember, we believe in city and nation transformation. We believe in expressing the kingdom of God in all the seven mountains of society. And so today, as we hear these, uh, these testimonies of the impact, uh, you know, when we do evangelism, it's about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's also it includes the gospel of the kingdom where we begin to penetrate the other pillars and, and influencers of society and one of the primary ones is the business mountain or the finance mountain and so today as we're here uh, you're going to get to hear a testimony talking about that so I've asked Mark Rowe uh, to actually take the time here to, in, to interview David today and uh, so I want you to listen to this I promise you it'll touch your life so as Billy said, this is uh, Pastor David Senfuma, yeah. and uh, he has a, a remarkable story. I believe, David, that you're one of the founder, founder members of this church, Glory of Christ, is that right? Yes, I am. I am a son of the Glory of Christ Ministries in Kampala, and um, right from the beginning with Pastor Bishop Herbert. Pastor Herbert is my pastor, he's my father in the spirit, so I'm one of the founding members of this church. So I believe he said that uh, he had to push you out of the nest and to say that you go and start your own ministry. So tell us about, about that ministry. Well, it is um, a glorified family church. It's called Source of Life Church. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have got two branches. One is on the north side of Kampala and the other one on, on the west. And um, being as a man of God and a father he is, Pastor Hubbard, had to really recognize the gift of God in my life and push me out, uh, having discerned out of his integrity of heart and understood that I've grown enough and a man enough to go out and start my own ministry under him and attached to him, he had to release me out and I think he's a wonderful, wonderful father when it comes to the things of God, so I appreciate that. I'm sure there are many people could say amen to that. Amen. So t tell us about your ministry and, and, and what you needed, how you've connected with Glowtrans or Glory Bank. Yeah, but what, one of the amazing concepts about this bank, uh, before I even uh, go to what I'm doing right now, is the concept of reaching out and going down to the, to the common people, right. the local people. We've got many banks all around Kampala, but some of them if I may say, most of them, so to speak, are only dealing with the rich, if I may say. You find that there is a gap between the poor people right. and the rich. Right. For you to access bank loans and uh, financial services from the banks, or maybe you want to borrow money, do anything that you want to do, you really have to be a man and a half to be able to do that. Right. You need to have securities, you need to have um, collateral uh, in terms of cars, in terms of land, in terms of buildings, and for you to be able to have that, you're already a rich man. Right. So what I'm bringing out is um, the glory of the Glory Bank and the Grow Trans have got a, such an amazing concept which no one has in Uganda. Simply because they're bridging the gap between the poor people and the rich people in between there. And they're reaching down to where people are. Exactly. They're reaching down to the local people, the people that are actually striving to have a meal. Right. You know, guys are so poor that to have a meal or two meals in a day, you've got to be a well-to-do person. Right. But Glowtrans is reaching out down to the local people, be able to bring them up and uh, grow their businesses, uh, help them, not only just lending them money, but also teaching them uh, some financial business expertise, principles, yeah. business principles right. and all that stuff, educating the community and the society to, be, to become financial allies and to be able to do what they are really doing. So I really think that they have got an amazing concept. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. So tell us about your actual ministry and, and, and what the challenge was or the challenge that you faced. Yeah, one of the challenges that w we faced and so many other ministers are facing is how to access the financial when you're in the initial stages of your ministry. Right. You know, um, well, uh, most of the churches that start out here 
uh, um, um, churches that run themselves, fund themselves, no funders from anywhere. And one of the challenges we face is we wanted to buy a land which is adjacent to one of the drug dealers. Right. And, um, and um, I, I, I approach the land, the owner of the land, and, uh, and I'm like, would you be able to sell us this particular part of land so that we can build our ministry on there right. and the church have it right there? And, and the guy, simply because we, we're not far away from each other, accepted to sell us the land. Right. But then the news came out that one of the pastors wants to buy this particular land and, um, and build a church there. Right. And the drug dealer heard about it. Now, he hijacked the deal, went on to speak to the landlord, and you know what? I'm going to give you double the money that the church is giving you. So he offered to pay double what you you had offered him. Exactly. And he went round behind. Yeah, right behind. And um, one of the amazing stories is that they are discussing the deal, the drug dealer and the landlord who owns the land, and... Um, uh, uh, and uh, they are discussing the deal in the sitting room and the wife is listening. What happened is we have got two of, the, of their daughters in our church. So the wife heard the story and um, they were asking and mentioning my name and all that stuff. Somehow when she, she came closer to the husband, she said, what is the name of the pastor? You say he wants to buy the, our land? And the guy mentions my name, Pastor David. And the guy goes, but this drug dealer is giving you double the money. So I'm going to give him the deal and be able to uh, kind of push the past away because right. they don't have the money, they can't access funds, they're not well-to-do people. So I'm going to give the drug dealer the deal and uh, they will lose it. So the wife begged the husband not to give to the drug dealer simply because we have done some amazing job um, around the community and in their daughters. And isn't the wife born again? Yeah, the wife is born again and, they, and their two daughters are born again. They come to our church. So having, it, it was like, the angel of the Lord sneaking into the conversation and trying to listen what is happening on the other side of right. the camp. Yeah, we need also to let people know that um, we are a little bit, I don't want to say under attack because the church cannot be attacked. Christ is powerful. The church of Christ is powerful and he's the chief cornerstone. So the church will stand. It's here to stay. But the thing is, there is a little bit of pressure that happens all around us that we've got this um, uh, concept of what we call Islamic banking. Right. What they are doing is they are gathering and putting together resources and fund Muslims on every forum they, 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 they are at. Politically, economically, in the business world, and all. Like um, what the man of God says about the seven um, mountains yeah. of, of influence into the society. The yeah. business uh, kind of it, the Muslim are so much into it. What they are doing is they are giving interest-free loans right. to the Muslims to just simply come and buy off the churches that are still struggling so that they can come and occupy the land that the churches have been doing. So, so that sounds to me like an intentional strategy because they're not looking to make money out of it. No, it is a strategy. Yeah that they are actually working against the church and destroying Christianity and promote Islam and promote Muslims. It's happening all around the world. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this because it's an intentional strategy so that Islams will flourish and the church will go down the drainage. So what happened with your story with yeah. the drug dealer? Yeah, the drug dealer and then uh, having the wife listen to that and uh, you know, and accepted the advice of the wife to sell through the church and deny the double offer that the drug dealer had offered. God. Yeah, you know, it, it came to a kind of like a little bit of a conundrum. It's one thing for the guy to accept to sell you the land, it's another thing for you to access the funds to actually begin paying the land. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what we needed. And there was no any way out I would do that. It was only to come through the growth trance because there is no bank that can lend you money and to go and buy church land. Actually, the, no bank that is giving Christians or churches loans. It's only the growth trance and the concept of the glory bank and glory credit so that's helping us with that. If you had not had that option, the, there was no way we were going to be able to uh, get even a glimpse of the money that we are looking at. So this, this service that's being provided that Bishop Herbert's had vision for is, is, is essential. I think, I think not only essential, but it is paramount. It is actually what, it is more like a revival happening in Uganda. Right. Because it's one bank that has got this concept and no any other bank that has it.
And I'm imagining our local people that we pastor, because I'm a local pastor, I know how an average Ugandan live like. Most of them, if I may say, 70% of the Ugandan are living almost below poverty level, if I may say. Yeah. So now all the 70%, except the 30 percent cannot access any bank loans or bank services be able to fund their local uh, businesses and be able to raise their lives up so you find that the gap that that i mentioned earlier on between the rich and the poor is growing wider and wider and wider and wider and most of these so to speak and the sad story are christians mm -hmm. so i think glory trans and glory um, 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 credit is really an answer to so to prayers of Christians all around the country mm -hmm. to be able to access funds and financial services Absolutely. at ease, Hallelujah. at ease, That's to be able to better their lives mm -hmm. and their families up. So just to finish off um, on your story, so you were able to access the funds from Glowtrans to, to pay this gentleman instead of the drug dealer? Exactly. The installment of it, um, we, we are processing, getting, um, uh, because we are paying in, 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 in installments, right. but at least we have got um, um, an amicable understanding with the landlord to be able to pay all the installments until we're finished. And, and soon, by God's grace, we're going to be able to do that. Hey man, well thank you so much for that David, that's uh, awesome. Thank you for taking the time to share that with I, us. I also need to say this for the rest of our other pastors because where we are standing in the office of Glory of Christ Ministries uh, is the West Kampala Pastors Fellowship mm -hmm. where we gather every Monday and reach ourselves, advise and speak into each other and all that stuff. What's happening is so many pastors, like my story, are taking the advantage of this vision and of this dream coming true and redeeming their churches. There are churches that were on the brink of being sold off. But it, you know, Grow Trans just came in time, just in time to rescue the situation. And we've got several pastors. If you come on Monday, you can have a lot of testimonies of them, you know, having rescued out of financial pressures, not only for churches, but also for business, but also for school. But, and, and on other projects as well. So we really want to thank God for uh, what is happening right here and glow trials and credit. Amen. Well, to be honest, I couldn't put it any more eloquently and articulately than David has done. You've done a marvelous job there. Guys, really just to say that what you're doing is vital. It is a lifeline to these people. Nobody else is doing this. So just be encouraged by that. Let God speak to you about that and uh, realize that what you're doing when you give, when you donate, when you invest uh, in what we're doing over here, this is a lifeline for these people and for the church, for the body of Christ yes. in this nation. True. So.